that time of year again here at Righteous Guitars for the Boutique Guitar Showcase. If you didn't catch my video here last year, this is a traveling show that is put on by Roberta and Jamie Gale called the Boutique Guitar Showcase. And it's a really unique thing where they travel around with 50 really crazy, unique, handmade boutique guitars. A lot of I've never seen before or by builders that I've never heard of before. And so it's a really cool opportunity to come and get your hands on some pretty unique instruments, unique concepts, different types of construction, different pickup builds, different ideas than your traditional Gibson, Fender, Gretsch, whatever. So we're gonna play some really cool stuff today. We're gonna hear some really cool stuff today. We're gonna look at some really weird guitars because there's a couple here that I can't wait to show you. They're insane. And I'm gonna try and pick my favorite guitar out of this bunch. So let's check it out. So this first one's pretty cool because uh, I was just on tour with Jesse Wilson. We were opening for Gary Clark Jr. And this is what Gary is playing on the road now, almost exclusively. He has two of these guitars right here. And I'm gonna get Jamie, man behind this operation to tell us about it so when i look at this guitar i think if robert johnson was alive playing an electric guitar today this would be where he'd be at i mean maybe not but <laughs> that's just what it makes me think of you know it really grabs all of that sort of dirty mississippi delta in there uh, you know on the boutique guitar showcase we deal with so many different types of guitars and and many of them look really perfect and beautiful and sometimes we get the comment like man i love this guitar i just couldn't feel comfortable playing this guitar on stage um, but this is a guitar that we get comments over and over again about you know, that they could relate to this guitar and pick it up and play it and, and love it and so um, it's only about a year old, a year from Summer Nan last year, so I guess, I don't know, 14 months or something like that. Um, and it's skyrocketed for him. I think he's pushing two year lead time now. Yeah, this this is my vibe right here. I, I get why Gary likes these. Jamie, what what is this? Yeah, this is Di Donato Guitars from Venice, Italy. This is a suspended arch top. Uh, everything on this guitar is attached to the aluminum frame, except for the top. So the top, the only thing that's touching it is the bridge here. But the strings are mounted into the frame, the electronics are mounted in the frame, the pickup, the neck, so you can see that. So allow the top to just do the work with the string resonance. Really incredible piece. You'll see uh, in Venice, just off of Venice's Murano and real Murano glass uh, inlays here. Uh, great little features and details. Enrico Donato is one of, the, one of the great guitar makers in the world these days. Uh, you'll see he uses a specific sort of uh, really hi-fi sort of caps, chooses each one for each individual guitar he makes to really pull out the right sound. Wow, each cap is chosen per the guitar, so they're different yeah. values? Every guitar he makes, he uses a different sort of value cap on it. Um, you know, there's a tide oil cap here, and you know, that one's a 300 volt, you know. And in this case, when you're after a specific vision, uh, which is how I define boutique guitars, by the way, is an uncompromising vision. Yeah. Um, that you don't put on something there to save 50 cents you go after the right one and the price is the price in the end. Yeah. Um, and when you have an uncompromising vision for this, then you realize, no, I gotta find the right, the right cap. Nice. What do you... I guess right here.
You have so much. Almost sounds like a chorus. <laughs> That's so sick. So, if you saw my video last year, I picked this builder as one of my favorite guitars of the whole show. Diego Vila from Spain, right? Yeah, Madrid, Spain, yeah. This, this one's right up my alley, man. What, uh, what is this? Uh, this is the new Diego Vila Greta. He's done uh, three models that he's sort of locked in at this point in time, all named after silver screen movie stars. Cool. You know, uh, and this one obviously Greta Garbo, but Greta also clearly references the, the Gretsch sort of inspiration coming out of this one as well. Um, you know, it's a fantastic sort of uh, Swedish Scots Pine, uh, you know, ebony fretboard, but TV Jones, the, the Duesenberg style, um, more or less Bixby sort of style tremolo on this. Uh, Diego lives and breathes that sort of 50s, 60s kind of retro vibe. Just look back hair, black horn rim glasses, and a, and a winning smile, actually. I, I, <laughs> he makes a guitar that's so believable because it's who he is. Yeah. You know, he, he's not putting it on. You yeah. know, it's, it's, it's everything he loves about the guitar and the era shows up in his designs. Great instrument. Nice. So this bass is actually made with what they call a 35 degree natural twist in it because your hand doesn't is not comfortable doing this. As a matter of fact, a lot of guitar players have to go to therapy to deal with this unnatural position. Right. So when you twist the neck this direction, you get to play in a more natural way. And then the other hand is from here, it gets twisted out this way. So uh, I don't know if you can catch this. It's hard to do it without a horizon line, um, but you'll see oh, yeah. this side is here and that side is there. Yeah. Sort of show it. <laughs> That's Torzel out of Austin, Texas. Really great and it's very comfortable and it's great sounding and playing. Uh, this is Relish Guitars out of Switzerland. This is a sandwich construction with an aluminum frame on the inside. Lots of incredible features. You'll see here there's a touch sensor. There are 17 different variations with two fingers down. That blue light goes away. We're on humbuckers. You can single coils when the blue light's on. Um, there's also a switch here for the piezo that's in the bridge. You can get a stereo cable with it, run out to an acoustic and electric at the same time. Now, this back part opens right up but real easily with rare earth magnets and the pickups are super easy to swap out. They're stuck <laughs> in there with some strong magnets, rare earth magnets as well. And you can get preloaded pickups on these frames. Uh, anything that Seymour Duncan makes goes on here, but you can also send some other pickup makers pickups to them in Switzerland and they'll mount them into this for you. They come in and out really easily, just like that. Wow. Uh, and it gives you new possibilities, which I'm always about yeah. the new possibilities. So.
So that's different. Yeah, uh, Daniel Memory with Oni guitars. Um, I love this instrument, the SE7. Uh, if you haven't noticed already, the frets on this are actually curved. It's a multi-scale instrument. Where the curve, uh, a player came to him and said, "I love this multi-scale guitar, but there's this yeah, one position I can't quite form the chords easily enough in." And Daniel got to think he's. You know, if I graduated the curvature, I might buy you just enough space that you would feel a little bit more comfortable doing it. Uh, and he, he pulled it off. I mean, any, every guitar maker looks at it and goes, oh, what's happening? Because it, it's a lot of work <laughs> to make something happen. But it's not just the curved frets here. This whole guitar is actually, it's really hard to pick up on the camera, so let's see if you can do it. But it's, it's built in, in a curve. So the entire thing is convex oh, in this direction, like, like a sphere. It moves in every direction. And then the other side, of course, is concave, but it's also built in a wedge. Can you see that this side is substantially thicker right. than this side is? So it sits really comfortably on the body. It sits back. Well, what this means is that everything, the bridge, the pickups have to be built in a radius. The fretboard is the radius with the pickups. Um, and it's when I flip it over, you'll see it's now uh, you know, uh, c concave on this side. Right. It's moving in every single direction, which is super hard to photograph. Um, the guitar is incredibly well built. It's super light, Rhett. If you pick this thing up, the weight of it is incredible. And Oni, if you uh, are unfamiliar, is a Japanese. They're often mistaken as a, as a demon sort of character, but really they're a mischievous character. They're, they're, they're more playful, not inherently evil. Right, right. <laughs> the fact that guitar players are still actively influencing guitar makers and the guitar's evolution continues every single day. Yeah. You know, and the main part of this show that we want to get through to people is just to open up the mind to consider that, you know, maybe the best things that we'll ever do haven't been done yet. Mm. Right. Yeah, I love where we've been, but I'm excited about where we're going. Yeah, man. This is the Teufel Tesla. Uh, ready to get your head in the game because this one is a philosophical sort of guitar. <laughs> Blue Teufel is dealing with the early days of rock and roll and the archaic noises that became a part of the soundscape of that early history. Things like unpotted pickup squealing and 60 cycle hum, uh, things that were not intended but became a part of live recordings and a part of our ideas of what rock and roll was all about. You know, in those early live recordings at loud volumes, the guitar players would come out and as soon as they turned on, they'd have to hit a note because the guitar was gonna <laughs> take off, it was gonna get out of control. And uh, as strange as it may sound, those sounds are built into this guitar on demand. So there's actually a grounding out switch, a 60 cycle hum switch, or an ungrounded sort of switch, and a, uh, and there's a small microphone embedded in the fretboard here that allows you to mimic a, an unpotted pickup. The shape of the guitar is meant to free you as a guitar player. When we see certain iconic designs, we reference certain styles of playing with them. You know, if you see a Telecaster, you may think you have to try some chicken picking. You know, if you play an archtop guitar, you may think you're supposed to play some jazz. Um, but this guitar is a shape that is meant to not reference any of the preceding iconic designs so that it can free you to play what you want to play on this guitar. It's a beautiful piece uh, and has wonderful front and wow. back on it. It's a red older body uh, with a uh, Canadian bird's eye maple neck on it and a Pau Ferro fretboard.
I have no idea how this thing works. Oh my god. I don't I don't know what to do with it. I don't know how to play it. How a guitar is designed and built completely changes the way that you play it. If something feels familiar to you, then you're gonna end up playing it in a way that feels comfortable and familiar. I think somebody out there would have a much easier time connecting with this guitar because it just speaks to them. For me, my favorite thing that I played, the two favorites were the Wide Sky and the Vila because those are my vibe, kind of a traditional old school. Jamie, Gail, and I were talking a moment ago about throughout guitar history, there's been periods of perfection and then rejection. And what he's found is people either prefer guitars from a perfection period or a rejection period. And I think I'm more uh, along the lines of the rejection. I like guitars that maybe aren't perfectly built. They're not engineered down to every single millimeter, but they have a vibe and they have a thing to them. Whereas a lot of people, somebody on this channel watching this video, prefers something that is exact and perfect down to every single last detail. Whatever speaks to you, whatever, gets you excited to play and gets you excited to learn and get better at guitar, whether it's a Les Paul or a Teufel, play whatever you want. I'll have the Boutique Guitar Showcase linked uh, down below. You guys should come check this show out if it's gonna be anywhere near you in the coming months. Jamie and Roberta are super cool. They've curated a really cool selection of guitars here. I really didn't even scratch the surface of everything that's here um, just because this video would be like two and a half hours long and I don't wanna do that. Huge thanks to Righteous Guitars for letting me film here and for hosting this awesome event. They will be linked down below as well. Uh, thanks to my dad for filming. Um, shout out to him. This was a really cool event for us to come and hang because this is kind of reminiscent of the things that he and I used to do when I was a kid learning guitar. We would go to guitar stores and just sit and grab guitars off the wall and play them and just listen to them together and nerd out on them. So uh, I'll have links to his Instagram down below if you want to go follow my dad, which is cool. Anyways, hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm Rhett Scholl. Thanks for watching and remember there is no plan B. But this one also has